Hello my friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you all about the things that I wish I did as soon as I moved to the UK. If you are new here, hello, my name is Nicole. I am a Canadian and I now live in England. And a lot of you guys have found this channel and have contacted me on Instagram and on Facebook about your immigration process to the UK. And so I thought it would be really wise to create a series about some of the things that I've experienced during this last three years and what I would do differently if I had to go back and do it again. So with that, make sure you hit the subscribe button to ensure that you see all the videos in this series. Now let's get into it. So the first thing that I thought I would tell you guys that I wish I did as soon as I moved here was switch over my Canadian driving license. Oh my goodness. If you haven't switched over your Canadian driving license as of yet, here's the thing. You can legally have your Canadian driving license for the first year that you are here in the UK. I never switched this over. I didn't intend on going back to Canada to live and I didn't get a car here right away. Now here's the caveat your Canadian driving license will only allow you to drive a automatic car my husband who was my boyfriend at the time he has a manual car so I never could drive the car and I didn't really need to have a car right away I still rarely really need to have a car and so I didn't really rush to go switch over my license here's the thing your Canadian driving license all obviously expires and if you end up getting married, you will have to send off your biometric card with your visa paperwork and all of that. And so this is what happened in my situation. When you send off your driving license, they also want either your passport or your biometric card. I needed to send my biometric card and my visa off to go get my new visa. And my visa expired at the same time as my driving license. So it was either get a new visa or get a new driving license. I wouldn't need the driving license if I ended up getting deported. So I obviously picked the visa and I'm now kicking myself in the backside because I now can't go get my driving license. The other thing that if you're Canadian and you're watching this, you might think like, oh, I'll just go get a new driving license. I'll just go get a test. No, there's so much more people here than you can even fathom. And now that we've been in a pandemic, it's even worse. And where I'm at right now is you can't even get a driving exam for months and months and months and months. And for me personally, I would like to take some lessons in driving on the other side of the road, learn how to drive manual, etc. But I kind of don't want to do the lessons really far in advance before my test. So when do I do the lessons? Do you see what I mean? So yeah, that was the first thing I know I've rambled on on that one for quite some time. But exchange your driving license right away. Like why wait for the full year? Just exchange it. I've also heard that you can get way better insurance rates if you change it. Okay, so the next thing that I definitely would have done as soon as possible when I moved to the UK is get on council tax. So my husband and I have a little bit of a different situation that I'm not gonna fully go into. However, he didn't put me on the council tax right away. It was about a year in that he put me on the council tax. But then when I went to go get my next visa, that made things a little bit more complicated because we couldn't prove we had to get married because we didn't officially live together for two years in order to be called common law. So I'm trying to like think about what's a concise way of saying this. Paul owned this house, but Paul wasn't living here. So Paul's address was at a different address when we first got together. And then my address was here three months after I'm, I got my visa. I don't know if that makes sense, but long story short, we couldn't prove common law, even though this is the only place I've lived since I moved officially to the UK. So if you are in a situation where you're moving to be with your partner, get on the council tax as soon as possible because if you don't want to get married or if you don't want to get married in a certain way, or if you're in a pandemic, and you can't maybe do things the way that you would want to do it if you had your behind covered in a certain way because you dotted all your i's and you crossed all your t's you wouldn't be in a situation of having to get married go get married we didn't go get married like because we needed to do anything like that i am a christian i have a whole video right here talking about why i didn't want to live with paul before marriage however one of my friends at the like semi beginning of this pandemic she had to go get married 
because her job was ap uh, applying for her visa for it and the UK government kept on turning her down because it wasn't like a job that paid enough from what I understand and she had to then get married to her boyfriend they didn't want to like do it this way and there were so many things that she didn't understand about getting married that she had to do and she literally got married like on a Monday and then the next day she had to apply on her visa otherwise she would have like been deported and she would have overstayed her visa time here so I know I went off a long time on that one as well but please if you are like in a relationship and that's why you moved over here get on the council tax as soon as possible like literally they even get on the council tax before you moved over here if that's allowed I know it costs money to do that it makes the person's council tax go up most likely but it will save you a hassle okay so the next thing that I want to talk about that I wish I did as soon as I moved to the UK is start saving for the next visa here's the thing the cost of the visa goes up every year and the cost of the nhs which is like your healthcare, goes up every year so when you think that you have enough mm -mm, mm -mm, you don't and then if you go get a lawyer mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, you don't you don't have enough money for me in my situation i didn't <laughs> budget accordingly and i found out what it was going to cost me for the nhs but they told me what it cost for the year not for the two and a half years that my visa was for so I thought that it was gonna be like 200 pounds for the NHS I think it was and it ended up being like 600 pounds and I didn't budget for that then because I'm now self-employed and because I wasn't on the council tax etc etc we ended up getting a lawyer because it was just I didn't want to risk screwing this up so we ended up getting a lawyer which then was another 1300 pounds so my visa expires in a year and a half we are starting to save for it now because it's a lot of money it's a lot of money I think it we ended up paying like almost 2400 pounds by time everything was said and done so start saving now okay on that savings note <laughs> I'm gonna say it again so save if you've moved to the UK and you're watching this or you're about to move to the UK and you get a job you're living life and you're like oh my gosh I just moved to the UK and I you know I'm so excited to now be living closer to Europe because I can now go traveling so so easy and not save my money save your money girl you can go traveling so easy and I one of the reasons why I wanted to move over here was so I could travel however I do wish that back in the good old days I put more of my money aside to saving as opposed to going traveling or as opposed to buying clothes or going to this restaurant that restaurant so it's about finding the right balance between enjoying your experience here but then also thinking about the future because when you get your visa especially if it's, if it's a tier 5 or like a family visa on the back of your card it is going to say no public funds which means if you're in a pandemic and nobody is making money and even though you pay taxes you will not get any type of help at all and it is soul destroying and obviously no one could have foreseen that this pandemic was coming but we could have foreseen that, that situations always happen and my experience in the pandemic would have been very different if I had savings to rely on and so I just want to say like often we save for getting here and then maybe we don't save as much <laughs> save no public funds the last thing that I want to talk about that I wish I did as soon as I got to the UK is getting connected within community so <laughs> it's hard to make friends here I think especially as a North American we are a little bit more warm we're a little bit more outgoing than the like average stereotypical Brit um, if you're a Brit and you're warm and you're like really welcoming please I welcome you in our in the comment section but it's this isn't like a diss this isn't um, me saying anything negative different cultures are stereotypical in certain ways and Brits are known to be more conservative and so obviously we never planned for a pandemic however if I knew what I knew now I would have got connected with more like-minded people a lot earlier on there are Facebook groups so that's been like one of my like best ways to get connected with people so I'm living in Bristol and there's like a group called Bristol girl and it's so nice to go in there and see girls that are recommending stuff you know doctors hairdressers things like that but then equally one of the best resources as a Canadian here in the UK has been there's different Canadian groups 
here. So like it will be like Canadians in Bristol, Canadians in London, Canadians in the UK, Canadians in Scotland. And there's so many different groups like that. And it's so nice because you can literally put a post in there and like within minutes, there's so many people that have commented on it to help you with whatever problem you have. Even if you don't want to post in there, if you just type at the top of the group, like tier five visa, you will find other people that have had the same question as you for sure. And it's just so nice to have been able to just go to people who have been in the exact same situation as you. Me, especially like during this pandemic, getting married, things like that, or even it's just like little things where you feel like you're so alone because most people do life differently than you. And most people understand life a little bit differently than you. It's so nice when you can just, you know, have something pop up on your timeline. And often it will be things that I maybe just experienced with Paul in the house. And then someone else has just experienced it somewhere across the UK. And I'm like, I am not alone in this. So yeah, that is my last point. But if you are living in the UK and there's things that you wish that you did at the beginning of your time here that I didn't mention, let me know what they are in the comment section down below and we can definitely vibe back and forth on it and you know, just be there for one another and maybe cry together. <laughs> Anyways, my friends, thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, I have a whole series of videos that is going out on the topic of being a Canadian here in the UK, and I would love if you used it as a resource, share it with your friends, and I would love if you subscribe. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.